So today, I'm gonna show you my top six exercises for increasing driving distance and swing speed. I'm gonna go through each one, I'm gonna show you how it's done, and I'm gonna make sure that you can start putting them in your program, start hitting some absolute bombs, hopefully down the middle. Right, so the first exercise, and has to be easily the most important, is a barbell Romanian deadlift. Honestly, I just love this movement. And for anyone who wants to be powerful with their lower body and get the most out of their goal swing, as a lot of power is generated from our legs, the RDL needs to be the first one you are doing. I would always, first of all, recommend you do it from a rack. You ideally want it where the knurling of the bar starts, just outside a hip width. We're then gonna come out. I like my feet around hip width, okay? And the reason why you don't want them shoulder width is because you want them to be in the most powerful position to jump. Now from this point, I'm gonna then focus on pushing my bum back. Almost like I'm trying to press a button, my bum, take the bar to the middle of the shins, and then I drive up and I squeeze them glutes. The way in which we make sure we use our glutes is trying to keep our body nice and neutral, okay? So keep the rib cage down, make sure we're pushing through, and then at the top, we really wanna feel like we're thrusting into the bar. I sometimes tell people who don't, well, I tell people to feel like they're fucking the bar, all right? The more you can feel like you really drive into it, the more you're gonna engage your glutes and your hamstrings, the more you're gonna get out of your Romanian deadlift. You don't want your grip to be the, the weak point. You want your hamstrings and glutes being pushed towards failure. So when it gets heavy, I recommend getting some straps. This is the one exercise that I, it's just a given and it'll help you get the correct form as well. Aim for a lower rep range. I would always aim for sort of six to eight. With a movement like this, you're best to focus on a smaller amount of reps and just make sure you're getting the form right and getting the weight up a little bit more when you feel comfortable with the form so you can really start to make some strength and power progress, which then is gonna carry over into absolutely smashing that golf ball. My second exercise has to be a chin-up. Now, the reason why I'm gonna recommend a chin-up over a pull-up is because a chin-up uses more of our core. It also uses more of our lats, which when swinging a club is very important, okay? It's a big muscle group in the golf swing, okay? So for me, building our lats and building our core, obviously for stability and so on and so forth, is absolutely key. If you didn't know, a chin-up is where you're gonna have a supinated grip, an underhand grip. And I would recommend going around shoulder width. Any wider, it tends to put a lot of pressure on your wrists. Anything narrow, you tend to be using a lot of your biceps and not really able to get them elbows tight to the sides and down, engaging your back and your lats, okay? So what you can do is if, if you find chin-ups tough, by the way, you know, you can use an assisted machine, I highly recommend bringing a band involved, which I'm gonna do in a second after I show you the form. And uh, yeah, building yourself up to where you can get full body weight reps and really push with it. Now with this one, it's not as important to stay at a lower rep range. Do as many as you can. I always recommend to clients with this, like set yourself a target in terms of total reps, so maybe like 30 for me, and just try and see how little sets you can do in order to achieve them. I'm gonna bring my feet forward, as that helps me engage my core. You can cross them and hold them like that if you would like, but I like to keep mine forward. And then I'm gonna pull till my chin is firmly over the bar. But make sure you're going all the way down. So many people do this sort of shit. And that isn't really doing much at all. If we really wanna use our lats and make sure we get the full benefit of the movement, we need to make sure we're going all the way down and all the way over. I'm going to show you how to do them assisted just in case most gyms have bands. Loop them round, loop it through, hook it onto one of your knees, put some weight through it, and then nice and steady and complete your repetitions. Make sure you only put one knee in it, all right? Some people put two and then they fucking flop and hurt themselves, so just make sure that's not you. And that is a chin up. Bulgarian split squat. Now these are like Marmite, you either love them or you hate them. But to be honest, have I ever heard someone say, I love Bulgarian split squats? No, I have not. The general consensus is they're fucking horrible. And that is it. There's a reason a lot of people do them because they're just one of the best 
things for your lower body. So first thing I would say is take off your shoes. You know, balance is gonna be massively at work here. It's nice to feel like you can really grip the floor with your feet. Now I've set it up in a rack and you can do the same in a rack or a swim machine. If not, you can just use a bench and literally place your foot back on it. But I find putting your foot back on a pad and letting it roll is just so much more comfortable and it keeps a bit more weight in that front leg where we want it. Yeah. So for distance away from where you're gonna put your back leg, squat stance, pivot, okay? I'm gonna go with my left leg, it's my weaker one. I would highly recommend you start with your weaker leg just because we wanna build it up and try and even them legs out as much as possible. So once I got my foot in position, place this back foot back. Now it's important that I keep the width of my feet. A lot of people start putting their foot behind them and then they're all over the place. So keep the width of your feet, stand nice and tall, feel like you sink your back knee down, push through that front leg all the way up. And that is literally it. And just nice and steady. And what I'd say is go all the way near to failure, if not to failure on that weaker side. And then soon as you can't get another rep, Make sure you count them. Place that other leg down in line with the level with your last one. Place your foot back and then let's repeat the repetitions. Now the reason why I love this movement is pure stability and strength. And obviously with a movement like the golf swing, it's so important that our hips, our knees, our ankles are nice and stable and we're nice and powerful through that squat motion. So I would actually recommend this one in front of maybe like a you know a goblet squat or a back squat or a bi some form of bilateral squat both legs now i will show you how to add load so i would actually recommend first of all you start with a single dumbbell and you start with it on your working leg side this is going to be the easiest way to balance so if you struggle with balancing i know it sounds kind of counterintuitive to go let's start holding the weight but if you're sure to balance just body weight, adding a small weight on the same side as your working leg should really help you to balance and get out more repetitions. Now, if you want to challenge your balance, put it on the opposite side. This is called contralateral, right? Contradicting the body. So then you go through repetitions. No one saw that. It is all of a sudden a lot more difficult and you're putting more emphasis on that balance. Now, once you feel comfortable with both of those, you can then just focus on adding as much weight as you can and placing dumbbells on both sides. Rep range can be around the 10 rep range. And that is a Bulgarian split squat. Number four. Okay, the next one is a push press. So an overhead pressing motion. But the reason why I've made it a push press and why I think it's the best one is because it's really a whole body motion in the way we use a bit of hip drive and a bit of movement just to get that bar over the head. So much of the goal swing is about these little, these little places of power in order to then generate more power in motion. So I think it's very adaptable. Now, the one thing I would say is if you aren't confident with lifting a barbell, I would highly recommend starting with dumbbells. You're just gonna have a lot more freedom to really press up, which is why I'm gonna show you dumbbells first. Place them nicely either side of your shoulders. Stand up with a nice square stance. Knees forward, little sink of the bum. Drive straight up and then control down. Drive straight up. And you can see it's a very explosive motion. All right, now that's it with dumbbells. In terms of a barbell, I'm gonna do it coming out of you. Normally I would always say, if you're gonna do any exercise of a barbell, do it facing the rack so you know where you're putting it back. Hands just outside shoulder width. Elbows under the hands. Keep the bar just above your shoulder, shoulder blades, hollow bones. You then, same again, shoulder width stance, little dip of the knees, sink the bum down. Big drive straight above the head. Now the important movement here is making sure you're pressing above your head. This is where you're strong and stable. This is not. This is pulling massively on my shoulder joints. The more you can feel like you pop and then drive your head through, the better you are gonna feel. And you can do it in some form of a continuous motion if you want, where you feel like you drive up, and as you come down, you go back into your sink and then push up. So you're in some form of a sequence. Or you can just literally pause down and then drive through, okay? With this one, again, lower repetitions. This is not the sort of movement that you wanna be going super high reps with. I would focus on being around that six to eight once again and just making sure that you form it with great form. Just like our goal swing, technique is the key. The more you can get the technique right, the more efficient you'll be, the more you're gonna to adapt to it. The greater the strength gains, the greater the power gains, the more distance you will get.
that's a push press. Number five, and this is, you can guess from this piece of apparatus, a parallel half bar dip. Now, obviously with motions like this, a lot of motions like this, if you're using that right arm or left arm, whatever swing, left side of swing you use, if you're using it correctly, you're extending your arms quite a lot, which means you need some strong triceps. And it doesn't get better than a parallel bar dip for increasing tricep strength, as well as just good overall upper body strength. Now, in terms of technique, it's a pretty simple one. Hands by your side. I, again, I'm gonna show you how to use it with a band if you can't get full body weight reps. You're then gonna get yourself into a nice tall position. Now with my legs, I don't really like to take my legs too far back because I think it puts me in this sort of weird position. I actually feel like I like to bring my knees more up. So then I'm really aiming my chest towards the front of the bars and then driving up. This way as well, I'm incorporating a nice bit of my chest as well as of course my triceps. Again, the reason for that technique is because a lot of people keep trying to keep their chest really upright doing this. But as you can see, it creates what we call a humeral glide in our shoulder. Now our shoulder gliding forward like this puts a lot of pressure on the front of our joint. And it's why a lot of people experience shoulder problems with certain movements in the gym. So I like to really open up my chest to reduce that motion of my shoulder instead of keeping it up and exaggerating right now, but doing something like this. Let me, just, let me show you with a band. Again, in your gym, they're probably, there's probably gonna be an assisted machine for this one, but I would, of course, just like I said with the chin-up, use a band because the hardest part of the parallel R dip, no surprise, is the bottom. So again, I would loop it around, and then once you're in position, bring your knees inside of the band. You're then gonna try and hold yourself in that same position. I'd cross your legs just to keep balance. Take your chest to the bars and drive up. And just like our chin-up, it's giving us more help out the bottom where we probably need it. And then we're pushing all the way to the top. Once you're done, pull your knees out, and it is that simple. Rep range wise, aim towards six to 10. You can go towards the higher reps, but it's actually pretty easy to start adding weight, just holding a dumbbell between your legs, and then you can just excel it further. We have an extra one, and you can actually use a cable for this one. And I bet everyone was probably sitting there going, why? Was there no core movements? Well, 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 well. You see, with all the movements that I've literally suggested, they are all compound movements, which means they use a plethora of muscles. They're not isolations, they're not like any bodybuilding stuff. You're using a lot of your core in these motions. So you don't need to do an excessive amount of core work. However, there is one core exercise that I would highly recommend. And you can either use a band or a cable machine. I'm gonna show you with a band first of all. And that exercise is something called a pallet press. So get a band, ideally in line with your chest because that's where you're gonna be holding it. You're gonna place yourself out with a, literally imagining your goal stance. Nice and square, shoulder width, bent knees, so you're in a nice stable position. Outside hand against the band, your inside hand over the top, and then you're gonna bring it into the middle of your chest. Now I'm gonna edge out just to make it a bit more difficult. Now, you will feel that all through your core, just holding that position. And all we do is do a nice pressing motion. Okay, up and down, nice and controlled through. All you're gonna feel is your obliques, a lot of your abdominals trying to hold yourself in position. And I think it's pretty fair to say, you can probably see the benefits of this one already. You're learning how to hold your body in a nice stable position while you've got some resistance working against you. Now obviously one, when you've done maybe 10 to sort of 15 reps one side, you simply swap over, which is what I'm gonna show you on a cable machine. Let me just get a D handle. And the way you can do the same on a cable machine, make sure again, it's around chest height. Get in a nice powerful position again. Bring it to the middle of the body and do exactly the same. Now, obviously with a cable machine, you would just add weight. With a band, you simply would just go further out and the resistance is gonna be greater. But this is the, one of the best core exercises that I feel really transitions over to the golf swing the best. And it's probably gonna help make sure that you actually finish on balance instead of walking off the tee. And that is a pallet press. They're my top six. From all of the experience I've gathered training people, they are by far the exercise that are probably gonna get the most out of your golf swing and help you really start hitting absolute bombs and uh, help increase that driving distance that everyone needs. I hope you enjoyed that video and I hope you found it useful. I wanna see them bombs. See you soon.